can talk about gingerbread cookies. I just want to eat it. One of the interesting things about my gingerbread recipe is that it's based on my Oreos. That's weird. I took out the cocoa powder and replaced it with a little bit of flour and took the golden syrup and replaced it with molasses and then added a boatload of holiday spices. First ingredient, brown sugar. Baking soda. Salt, and plenty of it. Orange zest. Vanilla. Ginger, cinnamon, cloves, coriander, nutmeg, and black pepper. It may sound like a lot of spices, but actually in the given volume of dough that this is, it's the right amount. So if you're like, this is twice as many spices as I see in a normal recipe, it's maybe a twice as big a batch. Butter, it's been softened, and then a little bit of molasses. And the key here is to absolutely not use black strap molasses. I'm not saying you can't use it for some things, but you can't use it for this. And just start out at low speed to get all the ingredients combined. Okay, and I'm gonna increase the speed. Okay. So after that creaming process, you can see on the spatula, this is the dark mixture that we started out with and this is how light and fluffy and soft it's become by the end of the process. This is the whole point of the creaming process. I'm gonna resume mixing on low and add the flour basically all at once. Okay, it's starting to come together in a dough-like situation. So I'm going to just scrape the bowl again. Scraping the bowl is how you show a dough that you care. The dough knows. So the dough is ready when you can't see any additional streaks of flour in the mixture, and when it's beginning to kind of form clumps up around the paddle attachment. And that's how you know it's done. When you're looking at it, you may think like, oh, it looks a little crumbly, and like, that's not a great situation. It's fine, this is what it's supposed to look like. So I'm gonna just scrape this whole situation onto the counter. I'm gonna bring it together and knead it a little bit by hand. So once the dough comes together, like so, I divide it in half. It's a lot easier to get a even thickness throughout the whole dough and to ensure that it doesn't stick if you're working with smaller portions at a time. So don't bite off more than you can chew, cut it in half, get some flour, add some dough, more flour on top. It can easily be removed with a pastry brush, so don't sweat it, use a lot of flour. So I start by rolling it just a little bit to get it started, and then I throw some more flour on top, flip it over, and that just ensures there's plenty of flour on the bottom so that it slides out as you roll. If the dough is sticking to the counter, it's not gonna slide out as you roll, it's gonna be like squeezed out or pushed out. And so this keeps it as a separate layer that you can pick up. Take your pastry brush and get rid of all the extra. It's my Kentucky roots coming through. Next step, this is the always step if you're doing a rolled dough, is take an offset spatula and just slide it under the dough. This ensures that it's 100% not stuck at any location and you won't tear your pieces as you're pulling them back out. And then start cutting. The biggest thing you wanna do is make sure you're nestling all the cutters as close to each other as you can. A lot of times in food magazines, they're like stamped out in little like rows or something, which is just a huge waste of space. I like to give them a little bit of a jiggle to make sure it cut through and leave it there. Don't, don't take it up just yet. Grab your next cutter and find a place where it nestles in to match that shape. Okay, so once you've cut up all your gingerbread dough pieces, get that spatula back out. And using an offset spatula here is just a really great way to make sure that none of the dough tears or deforms out of shape as it's being transferred. Especially like the gingerbread guy, his arms and legs are vulnerable. Kukudo is my love language. Okay, baking, baking cookies at 350 until they're 
golden and crisp, about 12 minutes. Do, 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 do. After the cookies have baked, you need to let them cool completely on the baking sheet. They're gonna be a little soft and fragile while warm, so you don't wanna try and transfer them to a wire or rack or anything like that. Just let them cool directly on the baking sheet, and then you can frost them with royal icing, or you can leave them plain. They're very delicious. I'm gonna decorate some with royal icing because I'm feeling a little festive, but that's just gilding the lily. You definitely don't have to go that far. They're really cute. You don't have to frost them, but it's cute this way. This tasty cookie is going to my mouth. Because guy's like, no, don't do it. And I'm like, sorry, what can happen? It's crispy, it's spicy, it's a little heat. I mean, can someone get me a cup of coffee? Merry Christmas. <laughs>